Okay, this little section here is just uh, in reply to a couple comments I received on my last video. Um, those comments have since been taken down. Those comments were not taken down by me. They had to have been taken down by the person who posted them. Um, just to let you guys know, I will never take down any comments on any of my videos uh, unless, they, unless things get really, really out of hand. Uh, you can criticize me and do whatever you want about what I do down the shop and take issue with that. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'm, I'm the one that makes the videos. I put myself out there. That's free game. The only things I will not allow is any seriously derogatory mar remarks, seriously uh, um, a a attacks on other channels or other commenters on my video or kind of really off topic, um, crazy political stuff. Uh, there, there's, there's a fine line between, between talking about, um, you know, so, some, some of, you know, the, the way trades are going and stuff like that, manufacturing, and then there's just a fine line between that. So those are the only things that really will get taken down um, and I won't allow on here, which I have not had to do yet. And also, just so you guys know, if you do post um, a comment with a link in it, that has to be approved by me. It's a, it's a YouTube safety thing. Um, so people can't just spam your channel with, with links. Um, so, and those are kind of really hard to weed out because uh, I usually look at all my comments on my phone and it just comes up as a comment. But if you go to the, you have to go to the actual video and then it'll come up as flagged as spam and then I would have to approve it. So ju just be aware of that. Um, if some of you guys have links on, on your comments and you don't see it on my page, that's more than likely why. Uh, also, I, I allow most of those. The only ones that I don't allow are ones that link to something that's completely different than what this channel's about. So anyway, on to uh, my little response for his comments. And um, basically, he took issue with the way I took about the phone. Said I didn't know what I was doing. That I just guessed it could hurt somebody. Hurt could hurt some. Could have hurt myself. Um, I did say that the, the ringer voltage is actually 90 volts DC when it rings, it's actually 90 volts AC. It's an alternating current when it rings, and we'll prove that with the meter right after this. Um, so you can get zapped by it, so just be aware of it, just like anything electrical, be careful with it. Um, as far as me not knowing what I'm doing, and maybe hurting somebody else trying to follow this video, I purposely leave some stuff out um, uh, of my videos, be it for length, and be it for it's only practical to my specific application. And one of those things was the wiring, the physical wiring and what terminals went where on my phone. And um, everything that I got from that came from this, which is the original manufacturing document of that phone, which covers everything from what ringer to use, to how to mount it in the wall, to um, every schematic diagram for that phone, including the touch tone system that they had on these, on these things. And it goes by different uh, networks, networks that they have inside of it. And my network on that particular phone was a WA1120A. And I followed the diagram exactly for that ringer, for that network. That donor phone that I got, I picked that phone specifically for a reason. Um, that phone there has pretty much the same guts as this phone, including the ringer and the exact same network. So it was wired exactly the same. Um, so that's why I was able to transfer the wires from one to the other. So to say that uh, I was just guessing, a wild guesser, and had no idea what I was doing, yeah, some of it was guessing, but it's a pretty informed guess, okay? Second, um, just about buying offshore brand tools, let's just put it at that. Um, I do try to buy American stuff whenever I can, but it's not always practical. Um, I, most of my, actually all of my tools for my, uh, that I use for a living, uh, for work are all quality tools except for I have a couple of beater Harbor Freight screwdrivers that I use to pull out knockouts and things like that. As far as my, my adjustable wrenches go, my screwdrivers and my uh, pliers and everything else, those are all high quality name brand professional tools. Uh, I make my living with those so I don't mind spending the money to buy something that I know is going to last and that isn't going to fail me when I need it most. Um, as far as the stuff in the shop goes, the brake and everything else like that, that's something I'm very rarely going to use. Uh, could I go out and spend $200, $300 on an American one? Yes, I could. Is it worth it for me? No, it is not. Um, I can get by with this and modify it to do what I want. As far as saying 
um, bitching about quality, uh, I, I really didn't bitch about it. The only thing I didn't like about it was the way that that bar was held down on top and the machining on it was a little bit funky. But other than that, it worked perfectly fine. Um, so with some modifications, that's the perfect thing. Um, as far as me being part of the problem um, of, of manufacturing leaving the United States, um, that's a whole other issue in itself. The United States at this point in time is really not conducive to manufacturing in general. Uh, between overly zealous uh, EPA reg regulations and things like that, um, crazy o levels of, of, of involvement between regulatory parties and things like that, um, and even, even unions are, are, are what's killing manufacturing today in the United States along with a lot of other factors, okay? It's not just that one thing, but um, companies are gonna look at the bottom line no matter what. If they can make a product cheaper um, someplace else, they're going to do it. Whether we buy it or not, it's gonna happen. So um, as, far, as far as the offshore stuff goes, I don't particularly like buying it, but you know what? If I can buy that for $40 instead of spending $200 for something for this, for this shop and this channel, um, you know what, I have to, because this channel, even though I do have advertising on this channel, this channel does not make money, all right? I have a little tiny bit of cash flow coming in from those, um, but it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, and it does take money to keep this channel going. It's just the way it works. I mean, I have to buy stock, I have to buy different things, um, you know, it, 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 it all adds up, plus I have other financial obligations in addition to uh, you know that are way beyond this channel that have to be taken care of first before any money can go into this channel which is why I haven't bought some equipment that I do want and it's just the way it is um, so you know that that that's just kind of what I wanted to touch upon and I, I, I know most of you guys know um, if you're gonna take on a project you're not gonna go off of one person's word and one person the way it does that that does it that you gotta look at multiple sources and things like that in which you absolutely should uh, I didn't get all my I didn't get all my information uh, on that phone from one source I got it from multiple sources I just try to condense everything that I found into one thing and put up a video that's enjoyable to people and that's what this is about it's not crazy I mean it, some of it is how to yeah but most of it in all honesty, is for entertainment purposes. And I have people that, wa that watch these channels that will never own a lathe in their life, and they just like watching things being made. So, now I'm off the box, and we'll get to the rest of the video. All right, um, whoops, let me turn that so you can see it again. When I was talking about the voltages in the last video, I did screw up a little bit, and I believe I said the ring voltage was 90 volts DC. It's not, it's actually AC. But I'm just gonna show you. Um, this is what's gonna be in your line all the time, which is gonna be a DC current, so we're on DC voltage. And it's gonna be somewhere around 40 volts or so, give or take. So, 50, 51. Now, so now I'm going to show you the ring voltage, which is going to be kind of hard with this type of meter, but um, we'll see if we can get it. So I'm going to set it to alternating current there, and we're going to get this in, and we're going to call the phone line. And you might be able to be able to catch it. 81, 72 volts. Let's see if it does it again. 81 volts when it rings, and that's alternating current. Now what I'm going to see. Okay, so now we're going to start installing the pulse to tone converter, and the one that I got is a um, rototone, but I got the one, there are two rototone types. There's one that fits inside the phone that you have to manually wire up, and there's another one that looks like a little box that just plugs straight in line with the, uh, the phone cord. So if you were to have a regular phone, um, all it would do was plug into, um, right into the little phone jack, and then there was a pigtail off the other end and that would plug into the phone jack on the wall and that little box is all pre-wired and all set and uh, will give you a, um, a pulse to tone conversion very easily now with the way this phone is set up there is no wall jack or anything like that 
Um, plus those little, those boxes don't allow the dialing of um, star and pound, okay? The one that I got does, and also the one that I got allows um, speed dialing and last call uh, received and, and things like that. So basically with the, this is, um, this is the card that came in there that kind of explains how to work all the functions. And you can see that's where I got it from. It's oldphoneworks.com. And they're based out of Canada. And it kind of shows you exactly how to work everything. So how to dial star, dial one, hold until you hear a beep. Dial pound, dial two, and hold against the stop till you hear it beep. You can do your last number uh, redial, and you can program speed dials and uh, things like that. Uh, repeated entry, lock stuff, you don't really need to deal with any of this stuff. But you can program actual speed dials into the rotary phone, which is actually pretty cool. Okay, so um, this is the Rototone module itself. And uh, this has all the brains and all the electronic gizmos and everything in there. And basically inside here, it's all everything is done with firmware. And this is a little microprocessor in here that interprets the pulses and sends those out down the line. And there are five wires coming off of here that go to various places in the circuit. Also in the kit, you get a diode, and we'll show what that's all about. And we get a polarity guard. This is polarity sensitive, so if for whatever reason... Um, the polarity of the phone line was opposite, this will not work. And, um, or if it ever got changed, say during service or whatever, for whatever reason, um, this little circuit here will prevent that, will basically um, keep the correct polarity to this at all times. Uh, we're probably not going to put this in because I know that the polarity is correct on my phone line and um, it's more of a pain in the butt than trying to mount it in there. But it's good for if you were installing these in phones that you were selling to somebody or something. Um, I could see where that would be useful, but like I said, we're not going to be doing that. And my phone line no longer goes out to the street. It goes to my modem, so everything is done aside there. So the polarity, for me at least, won't end up being an issue. It comes with some lengthy instruction manuals here and tells you how to do everything and it gives you some examples of some um, schematics and everything and they're very very simplified each phone is different um, and actually if you go on their on their website they do have some schematics of specific phones um, I pulled this one up and um, this is installing a Rototone and automatic electric 80 and 90 series telephone which is what this is the 90 series 95 with a WA1120A network, which is what that network is. It's labeled on the board. Um, the only thing that I don't get with this is if you read through it, it says uh, like things like remove white wire from terminal 8 on the network, which is fine, which is terminal 8 on that board, and connect to first position of terminal block. Well, I, I don't have a terminal block in this. And that's pretty much what this is telling you to, to do. And if you look in the actual booklet from this phone that I have here. Then let me see if we can find a the picture. There is one here with a connecting block on the top. So I'm assuming that's what they're talking about and I don't have that so we're just gonna take our schematic for our network which is this one here. Um, 112 way network with small induction coils, the newer one, that's what we have in this phone. And um, we're going to kind of combine this schematic here with this schematic here and wire this guy into that phone and see if it works. So um, like I said, basically it's just figuring out this is kind of relatively easy to follow. Um, the blue wire here is is power goes to the negative to the uh, it's the actual ring line. This uh, orange orange and red this red wire goes to the the tip line, you know the positive, and this orange here goes to. Um, 
the pulse contact, I believe. Let me just double check. It says right on the front. Orange to the pulse contact on the dial. The brown goes to the uh, the shunt on the dial, and the white is the common on the dial. So the 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 shunt is basically um, it's reading the shunt on on the on the dial to um, let this know that that dial is in its resting posi position and then it's reading the pulses along this and then what it's doing is through these two lines here is generating the tone and sending its, the tone out on the, the actual line through these wires here. Now the power wires have to be hooked in after the hook switch otherwise basically your, your phone will be on all the time. It'll be off the hook. So um, these need to be after the hook switch, and they also need to be after the hook switch because um, of your ring voltage that goes through your ringer circuit before the hook switch. So these need to be isolated from that. So they have to be on the other side of the um, of the actual hook switch, which this all this all these instructions and everything indicate here. Now this is a bit complicated, so um, I studied the schematics for a little bit back and forth and kind of figured out where we need to go with all the wires and uh, so we're gonna go do that okay so um, I'm with Mr. Schematic of the way the phone is set up now and the one for the Rotatone module which is in the instructions um, which is right here that one right there we are gonna hook this in place so now, according to this guy here, my red wire and my blue wire are my supply. Blue being negative and red being positive. Alright, so red, red, yeah, I'm just double checking here. Red is, is positive, so that's my tip line, so that's my green wire coming in. And blue is the negative wire, the, the, the ring wire, uh, which is the red coming in. So, um, tip is off of number eight. Eight, which goes to the hook switch. We want it after the hook switch. So eight, I'm just looking at this schematic here. So tip is going to the hook switch, eight. We want after the hook switch, so after the hook switch is two. So we want the red one on the two. Where'd my little screwdriver go? Red one on two. And blue, which is negative, which is ring, after the hook switch is 11. So we want that on 11, which is this edge here. Alrighty. Pink, white on some units is the common connection to dial. So let's look at the dial. Now I got you focused in on the dial a little bit here. So basically, uh, the white wire is the common connection on the dial. So common should be this wire right here, this blue, because it's connected to both the pulse contacts and the shunt contacts. Let me trace that back, and that goes to number one on the terminal board. Let's just look at our little schematic here. Find number one, and number one is right there. So we go to both the dial, pulse contacts, and the shunt. So that is our common wire. So we'll pull this off both sides because our rototone is taking the place of our network down here, basically. So 
So our white is going to be going to our common. Actually, I'm going to put it on this one here just because the fork is a little bit big. And I don't want it to touch that other contact. And we'll tighten that down. And let's see what else we got here. Orange is pulse. This is the pulse contact here. We can confirm that by following this back. And that goes to number 11 on the board. So number 11, which is right here, goes to the pulse dial. So we take that off there. Take it off the network board. Oops. And that was what, why did I say? Orange. Orange goes to pulse. Okay. And then brown should end up over here on one of the shunts. Uh, brown connection to shunt contact on dial. You get two wires there. Okie dokie. So let's see where these wires go and see which one I have to take off because I have a red, which is right here. And the white, which is right there. Okay, give me a second and let me figure that out. Okay, I just looked at um, the schematic here again, just real quick. So this is the way it is now. So you can see the receiver goes through the shunt. And then on the other diagram here, the receiver does not go through the shunt. So what I'm going to do is take both of those wires off. the dial here and put the brown in place and we'll basically See if that works. I'm gonna leave all the other wires tied up for right now and just insulate them. Um, actually, these two are disconnected. There's a there's a tie. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna neaten up these wires a little bit, and then I have to put in the uh, the the diode. Okay. So I put the diode in. You can see it right there. I had to actually extend the lines. I had a branch between 11 and one, so it goes between the. Um, the two old shunt contacts, which is 11 and 1, and it's polarity sensitive. And of course, the, the, the leads on it were just like a hair too short. So I had to extend it. I don't have any heat shrink tubing, so I just put some electrical tape on there for the time being. Um, I'll get some heat shrink um, tubing and put it on there. Now, what I was saying about the uh, receiver not having to be shunted, it actually says so in the... Um, the instructions. The rototone module actually produces the click that the shunt produces. So um, let's wire this up and we'll see if we can dial out. We'll see if we get a dial tone and we'll see if we get um, a actual uh, touch tone tone when we dial a number. So I have everything hooked up. We get a nice strong dial tone there. So let's try dialing something. All right, ready? Hopefully that comes out on camera. Ready? All right, I'm gonna dial a number. All 
All right, so we're gonna try calling somebody. Okay, so we're all back and mounted. Everything works, and I'm going to call myself. And obviously, I'm not gonna show you the dial, and I'm gonna mute the audio so you can't hear the tones or the dial clicks. So let me just... get you over there and we're gonna call. Ringy. There it is. Okay, so now we're going to try some of the special features. And to dial pound, you hold two until, until it stops until you hear two beeps. So. There's, there's the two beeps, so that just dialed pound. 